réfléchissez sur ces questions en écoutant. Quel est le degré de sécurité et d'inclusivité ressenti dans les couloirs et dans les salles de classe par les élèves qui sont, s'identifient comme ou sont perçus comme un membre de la communauté LGBTQ Les élèves se sentent-ils en sécurité, dignifiés, aimés et accueillis dans votre école I would also say to, to principals and vice principals, please, gallery walk your school. Take on an identity. Say, today, I'm going, when I open my eyes, I'm going to walk through this school as though I'm an, a lesbian. And I'm going to look for myself. How am I spoken about? How am I dealt with all day? I'm, I'm not going to name it for anybody. I'm just going to listen and look. Uh, do I only see heterosexual displays? Do I only, do you see them? So then the next day, today I am a black student in this school and walk through your school. Do a gallery walk. What pictures are up? Do you see a broad spectrum of races? If you see races depicted, are, who's helping whom? Are they in need of help? Oftentimes we, we think we're depicting other people's other races and really we're, we're, we're diminishing them in the imagery we're using. Uh, or is there, is there a richness in the representation of body type uh, that's around the school? When you take on the identity and you gallery walk, that empathy builds because you, you begin to see what you don't see. Um, and that's one of the key things I would do. I would actually invite my staff into that kind of piece to take on an identity for a day or a week and just listen and look and what are you hearing about yourself. Une promenade de galerie peut également être appelée promenade de foi ou promenade d'équité. Dans son livre Auditing Our Catholic Schools, A Process of Discernment, Discussion and Action, John Kustoff invite les éducateurs à engager une discussion, une réflexion et un dialogue délibéré sur le désir de mieux faire et d'identifier où il y a un besoin d'amélioration de la spiritualité, la célébration et la croissance au sein de votre propre école. Une promenade d'équité est un cadre pour assurer la responsabilité et la transparence. Il s'agit du directeur ou du directeur adjoint qui parcourt l'école pour évaluer la preuve d'une approche équitable de la scolarité pour tous les élèves. Considérez inviter votre personnel et les représentants des étudiants à participer à une promenade de galerie, de foi et ou d'équité. Qu'est-ce qu'une promenade de galerie, de foi ou d'équité révèle sur la culture et le climat dans votre école? Chris Rorig est le directeur de l'éducation du conseil scolaire du district catholique Brent Haldeman Norfolk. Dans ce segment, écoutez pendant que Chris parle de l'importance de la modélisation, de la formation et du soutien de l'écoute active et du renforcement des relations dans la création d'une culture de rencontre. When we talk about culture, uh, what we mean is is that it's something that has to be pervasive through the organization. It starts with modeling good skills when it comes to encounter. And I think that has to do with aspects of active listening and most importantly being present to people. And when you're present to people, they feel like it's safe, they feel like they uh, have valuable input, they feel like they can collaborate. I think first of all it's important that directors uh, model a pastoral approach with their principals um, and, 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 that, and that really boils down to uh, our ability to, um, uh, to meet principals where they're at and to work with principals on a day-to-day -day basis. I think it, uh, when, when principals come to, to senior administration with concerns it's important that we're listening to those concerns, that we're um, Uh, listening in a way that's trying to be sensitive to uh, their needs as learners and so that we put programs in place to help develop their capacity. I think in concrete terms, principals, um, if they rely on the underpinnings of being a good listener, that will go a long way. So what I mean by that is it's really important to listen to student voices, to listen to parent voices, to listen to the voices of their staff, to get a true sense of where they're at and where Uh, and, and what's affecting them in their lives. When they do that, um, they, they don't have to be so caught up in um, the technicalities, the theory um, of, of a very complicated issue. They're able to deal with the relationship side of things, which is probably the most important part. La publication du ministère de l'Éducation intitulée En conversation, des relations saines, 
le fondement d'un climat positif à l'école, fait référence à la confiance comme étant le fondement invisible de la collaboration et de l'apprentissage. Prenez un moment pour prendre une pause et réfléchir. Quelles sont les opportunités d'entretenir des relations de confiance saines Y a-t-il de la place à l'amélioration Quelles conditions ou ressources supplémentaires sont nécessaires Faisons-nous une écoute active. Tamra Nugent est directrice de l'éducation du conseil scolaire du district catholique de Wellington. Écoutez les stratégies et exemples spécifiques que Tamra partage dans la création d'une culture de rencontre. So on a very practical level, uh, we have this work embedded within our strategic plan and so we have specific goals and actions related to equity and inclusion work. And then that translates to our board improvement plan, which then is embedded in school improvement plans, specifically in the area of Catholic community, culture, and caring. And so that's where schools have an opportunity to articulate exactly what it is that they plan to do in order to continue to build this rich uh, culture of encounter where kids feel safe because we know that when they feel safe and included that they're going to have the greatest opportunity for learning. What's really important is as a director I try to be present to the conversations, the professional learning and the problem solving. It's an important way to help staff know that they are valued, that their work is valued and that they are supported. The uh, Prophet Micah provides a great framework for understanding of this work in terms of what it is we are called to be and how we are to be in the world, and that is to act justly, love kindly, and to walk humbly with God. And so in terms of acting justly, it's important that we recognize each individual and affirm who they are so that they know that they are loved Loving kindly is really making sure that we have an understanding of the church teaching. And then walking humbly is about how we move forward together and how we do this in community. So the role of the principal then in terms of acting justly, loving kindly and walking humbly with God is really to be able to model that for staff and then to create the conditions that will empower uh, students to have a voice and to take a leadership role within their schools around these important issues um, that help to maintain and build this culture of encounter. In my work, I've witnessed a lot of creative ways that uh, principals bring this work to life. Uh, it can be anything from um, you know, visible signs, posters that say um, particular things that kids can identify with and know that this is a safe place. Uh, there are a variety of clubs that are hosted. Uh, often they're social justice clubs. And within that, they look at a variety of issues, LGBT being one of them, um, which fulfills a specific need. Réfléchissez sur les paroles de Tamra et la citation de Mika et comment cela peut informer votre plan d'école avec la lentille d'agir justement, d'aimer chaleureusement et de marcher humblement avec Dieu. Comme indiqué dans la monographie du ministère de l'Éducation intitulée « Passer des idées à l'action, prendre part à des conversations courageuses ». Les compétences et les valeurs interpersonnelles qui permettent aux leaders d'établir et de vérifier leurs propres hypothèses, considérées comme des vérités établies, ainsi que celles des autres à leur sujet, au sujet des autres et de la situation, sont essentielles à toutes les dimensions du leadership. Pour ce faire, la compréhension de soi et l'impact du biais dans ces conversations est critique. Recherchez sur votre furteur Harvard Bias Test pour obtenir un lien vers l'outil de projet implicite afin d'identifier les attitudes que vous ne pouvez pas être conscient d'embrasser. Prenez un moment pour réfléchir et planifier. Annie Kidder est la directrice générale et fondatrice de People for Education, qui travaille à établir des liens entre un système d'éducation solide et une société juste et prospère. Le prochain segment présente Annie, qui partage les points de vue sur les facteurs qui contribuent à la qualité de l'environnement d'apprentissage pour les élèves de l'Ontario. 
Well, I think this goes back to, uh, again, understanding that the quality of the learning environment itself, which does involve all the adults and the students uh, in the school, is an, is an important aspect of, of learning. So if we think about how we improve students' sense of agency, how we listen uh, really truly to students rather than a kind of tokenistic way, how we understand that a school community working well together uh, improves all students, again, and chances for success. So then you, it's kind of shifts then your energy to go, how do we work, how do the teachers, the administration, the caretakers, uh, the whatever support staff are in the school, how do we work together to ensure that the quality of the environment that our students are in, and that's inside the school and then in, in connection with the community, how do we make that strong? Annie parle d'agence. Faites une pause et réfléchissez à la question suivante. Comment vous nourrissez et mesurez la capacité d'agir au sein de votre école pour vous assurer que toutes les voix sont honorées